Well, good morning. It's good to be in God's house today. And so let's stand. Turn to our hymnals. No. Thank you. Hymn number 255. Hymn number 255. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine.
Let's all stand once again to hymn number 314. Hymn number 314, I am thine, O Lord. Hymn number 314. <laughs> Yeah. 
Testament. Thank God for that. We're glad you're here. And I don't know about you, but thank God it is Sunday we can be here. Wow, what a week. You just ever just kind of wake up on Sunday morning and say, how did I make it to this point? I'm thankful I'm here and not back there. What a week. We're glad you're here. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what God has for us this morning. We're going to have some fellowship afterwards. And so, um, a lot of things going on. I know right now we're in the midst of Christmas shoebox. So, we'll get those geared up and start going on that. And so, and then uh, the first weekend of September, I don't remember the dates in the bulletin, but um, the same church that Brother Lyons was from out of Springfield, it's a man that you know, deals with Bible distribution. And so him and his wife will be here, and uh, they'll be here in Sunday school at Sunday morning, and then uh, just to hear about his ministry and see how we can learn, but also bless other people. Uh, there's many different Bible distribution groups out there. The most important thing is this, they're not in competition, we're in there trying to let people know about Jesus Christ. Uh, if you were to go through your house, before we get into this, if you were to go through your house, how many portions of scripture, how many Bibles would you collect? Quite a few. A lot. You know that in some countries, if, they were, if there was a portion of scripture, just a page of scripture, and they do check randomly in some country, if a portion of scripture is found, not just that family is killed, but the second and third generation of people are killed. And we are blessed people in the United States of America. And so that's what Bible distribution is about because we want people to know and hear about Jesus Christ. And by that, we have the word of God. And by that, people get saved. And so that's what we're going to have to come in. And so I'm looking forward to that. So just a thought. I was thinking about this this week. And I talked to him last week about coming. And uh, thinking. And, I, I'm, and I'm going through the house. And I'm thinking, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's... Wow. I can only read one Bible at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have all these Bibles to collect, don't we? And so, but while, while we're reading them, just, just take an account that there's someone right now asking God to give them something to read from, his, from Him. And so, definitely pray for God to open those things. Psalms 55. Psalms 55. Listening to stories this week about the, the harrowing adventures of people, what happened in Hawaii, it made me think just about how fearful times are today. You think about that, you think I was watching the national news on Friday about up in Canada, literally people are, that have been there for three, four generations. I mean, you talk about whole cities and almost the whole state is totally displaced with the fact of just a raging wildfire. You think about what's happening in other parts of the world, as I've talked about in, in a town, little country called Cameroon, where you have freedom fighters, freedom for what? Freedom from God, are going in and, and crossing over into different countries and literally shooting people, knocking on doors, looking for any type of Christian representation and bringing them out and humiliating them, beating them, and or killing them. And literally in Pakistan, they had the net, the world news that literally there are people that are going in and literally burning down churches that have a cross on them. And literally there are people in the streets yelling, kill all Christians, kill all Christians. And that's around the world. We are definitely living in fearful times. You think about the financial condition of what's going on, not just outside of our area, but in our own homes, health issues family issues, uh, job issues, so many different things, children issues, so many issues to deal with. And so when we think about that, say, so, okay, God, we're living and we know that how bad our times are, but we also know, God, you have an antidote. You have the answer to help us to get through these things. Psalm, 50, Psalm 55, and we'll, we'll sporadically go through this to look at different parts of scriptures, and God has an antidote to how to deal with these type of times. Psalm 55 verse 1 says this. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Have you ever prayed and said, Lord, where are you? God, I just feel like I'm totally alone right now. God, don't hold your ears because I need to know that you're listening to me. He says, hide not thyself. 
Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because the voice of the enemy, and it seems like the voice of the enemy is getting louder and louder and louder. Because of the oppression of the wicked, and the world's getting wickeder. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Do you know, can I tell you this? Satan doesn't hate us, he hates Jesus. And yet, he goes after us because he can't touch Jesus. And it's just like with any type of an enemy, if they're going to attack you, they're going to go to where your heart is. And they know the heart of every parent is your child. And that's why we need to pray for our children more than ever before. If you look at your bullet, I wrote, I wrote just some things that as, as individuals, how to pray for families. And just some things, I'm trying to give you some ideas and ways that kind of broaden your expanses of things to do. Uh, it gives you specific things to pray for. And so he says, my heart is sore pain within me and the terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me and horror hath, I said this in my, my Facebook live this morning, overwhelmed me. They overwhelmed me. We mean overwhelmed. It's just like this huge wave has hit me and knocked me down. And I'm trying to gain my feet, my footing. And I'm trying to get to where I can breathe again. And I'm struggling. That's overwhelming. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. But then would I fly away and be at rest. This morning when I look at the subject, God's antidote. For fearful times. Father, we love you this morning. Lord, just know what I know. We are we're living in rough times. The people that I know and I love are struggling and they're hurting. And they're grasping, Lord. And they just need just a special touch from you. They need you to take control of the situation. It just seems like everything's just totally out of control. And so, Lord, we know that you're in charge. And so, Father, give us that answer. Give us that hope. Give us that, that assurance to know that it's going to be okay. So, Father, for the message to go across like you want us to, let me sit down. May Jesus Christ take over. And, Lord, I ask the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be truly acceptable unto you. We love you, Lord. Please bless and maybe be able to say it has been good to be in the house of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> we see, first of all, verses 1 through 5, if we're going to have an antidote, first of all, we need to open up ourselves to God completely. We need to open up ourselves. David says, Lord, I feel like you're alone, so don't hide yourself. Lord, I'm overwhelmed. I'm struggling. It seems like the wicked has raised their voice. They're attacking me. And it just seems like everywhere around me is so unsettling. Lord, I just don't know what to do. We need to open up ourselves to God completely. We need to admit our condition. Loneliness. It says, hide not yourself. Loneliness. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who just lost their spouse. And they're struggling mightily. And the last thing this person said, said, I just don't know how to handle being alone. Now, that person's a Christian, prays, reads her Bible, talks to the Lord. But that's not going to exempt us from our feelings of what's going on around us. Loneliness. We need to express our oppression. Lord, it seems like I have an enemy. It seems like no matter where I go, I feel like I'm constantly barraged by things that are trying to hinder me from making progress in my life. You ever been there before? That's why I love coming to church. <laughs> it seems like you take one step and then you get beat back two steps. You think, well, I'm a Christian. I shouldn't have to do that. That's life. Even the most mightiest of men and women of God struggle with different things. I've told you a story about Martin Luther. He was the one that started the, um, the Protestant movement. And um, he was married as a, as a priest. And um, 
One day, I mean, one amount of time, he was just so depressed. He was just depressed. One day he woke up, there was total, everything was in black. Took all the curtains out, made black curtains. So he woke up and he asked him, I said, what's going on? Have a seat. What is going on? Who died? I'll tell you in a minute. Eat your breakfast. <laughs> Eats his breakfast. You've got to tell me who died. This thing like this. Just, just nothing but there's a, there's a sense of, it's just like, it's bad here. What's going on? And so she said, what's the question been asking me? Who died? She says this, apparently your God has died because of the way you're acting. He says, is that what you're trying to teach me? Yes, because God's not died. And although the troubles that we're going through may be bad, but God's bigger than those problems. But you've got to learn to admit it. But then also explain your need. I'm terrified. See, God has not given us a spirit of fear. It doesn't mean you're not going to be afraid. Terrified. I was talking to someone this week, and they were just saying, her and her husband were talking about some things, and they were just saying, I am terrified for the future for my kids. And then she went on to talk about what she sees now. And how it's changed within the last 20, 30 years. And we that have not lasted longer than that, we can say, wow, we're in a different, complete universe, it seems like. Just terrified for what my kids are going to go through. She said, you're a preacher, what's the answer? Uh, uh, I said, well, first of all, you need to say so being saved is not going to change your circumstances, but it's at least going to give you a, someone to help you to feel like you can be get through. Then you need to be able to read your Bible and need to go to church. And I said, but first of all, let's, let's work on this thing about being saved. And then she asked me, she says, do you ever get afraid? Yes, I do. And we talked about those things. So the aspect of our Christianity is this, is that Christianity are made up of humans with the, with the Adamic nature, although we are saved, we still have those feelings of inadequacy. We have those feelings of failure. We have those feelings of, Lord, what am I going to do next? Lord, I wish if I would have made that decision, my life would have been better. All those different things play in our minds. That's part of our humanity. And we've got to admit to that to be able to start with this down the pathway when it comes to dealing with our fearful times. But then the aspect of admitting our condition and expressing our oppression and explaining our need and then admitting our feelings. See, everybody, my, my, my wife was telling me, Jim, you're not Superman. There's a lot of kryptonite out there. I hate it when she was right. <laughs> And I'm not going to give you a percentage either. <laughs> but the fact is this. Is that sometimes we try to do more and take on more ourselves. To kind of cover up what we're dealing with ourselves. Secondly, take refuge in him. Look at verse 6 says this. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Look at verse 14, and it says this. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Take refuge in him. First of all, go to Psalms 27. Why do we take refuge in him? Because he is our light and our salvation. Psalms 27, look at verses 1 through 5. Psalms 27, verses 1 through 5 says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And you read on, verse 4 says, One thing I have desired the Lord that I will seek after, that it may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. For in the times of trouble, I, he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Let me challenge you, if you're looking for a Bible study, just go to the book of Psalms and circle all the pronouns. He, his, 
me, mine, I. There's 150 of them. Take your time. But take your time as you're reading it and look at how personal the writers of, of the book of Psalms, these were from their personal hearts, their personal experiences, personal failures, personal struggles. And they're crying out to God and saying, Lord, this is how I feel at this time. Take refuge in him. He says, if I only have wings like a dove, I can fly away, I can escape all this place. But also, not just their light and salvation, but is there a place of protection? Look at Psalms 32, Psalms 32, and it says this in verses 6 and 7. <laughs> For this shall everyone that is godly pray to thee in the time when thou mayest be found. Surely the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. Now one note of studying the book of Psalms, that word Selah. It's a word that's saying stop and think about what you just read. That's what Selah is all about. He says... For thou art my hiding place. Let me ask you a question. When you were kids, did you ever play hide and seek? Yes. Did you have that one place that no one could find you? I did. It was up in a tree. <laughs> and I had worked it out to where I could see down there, but they couldn't see me. And I never got caught. And I always won, and I love it, because I'm competitive. I don't like losing anything. When we think about that hiding place, it seems like the enemy can't find you. It's kind of like they walk past you and you're invisible. You feel safe. You feel secure. You feel like nothing's going to harm you. And the Bible says that the Lord is our hiding place. Let's run towards him. So he is our light. He's our salvation, our place of protection. There was an old phrase on those that says, you are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Open up ourselves to God completely. Take refuge in him. Thirdly, replace anxiety with thoughts of God. Go back to Psalm 55, verse 16. Psalm 55, verse 16. It says this in verse 16, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and that he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes. Therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him, he hath broken his covenant. Replace anxiety with thoughts of God. Look at Psalms 23, verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. Oh, that's a good one. Psalms 20, 23, verse 4 says this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, Looking at that window right there, and as the sun hits those trees, I can see shadows. And I tell you that no matter how hot it is, it seems like it's always at least 5, 10, 15 degrees cooler. But it doesn't stay there, does it? Because as the path of the sun moves, that shadow moves. So it says, Lo, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. It says, I will not fear evil. Thou art with me. Replace anxiety with thoughts of God. Look at Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Look at verses 1 through 3 says this. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, because he is our very help in trouble, 
Will we not fear? Psalms 46, verses 1 through 3. It doesn't mean the problem's not going to be there. It's just the fact that the Lord's there. It says, Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried and miss the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. So it doesn't matter what's happening, the Lord's my refuge. It may seem like everything around you is falling completely apart. It feels like the, the mountains are quaking and it's beginning to split and, and the rocks are falling down with the big landslides. And you feel like um, the earth is quaking underneath you. And you feel like the rain is not falling down this way, but it's horizontally and the waters are rising. You should have no fear because God's not going to let you sink. Place thoughts of anxiety with thoughts of God. In fact, look at Psalms 43, I believe it is. I'm sorry, Isaiah 42. <clears throat> yeah, Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with you. Waters. It's kind of like we have those, those rainstorms, those gully washers. You just have puddles and just water running everywhere. The waters. He says, I'm going to be with you. So this, and though the rivers, they shout out of clothing. So the waters go into the, to the rivers. It says, they shout out over, 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 uh, over clothing. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kill upon thee. And this is why. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. It doesn't mean that you're not going to go through the storms. It just means he's going to be with you. When you think about that last part of verse uh, 2, it says, when thou walkest through the fire, is there a story in the Bible that is well known in the book of Daniel that talks about this situation? Yes. Three pieces together. And they walked through the fire. Now they were thrown in there by the guards. But then when the king looked in, they weren't throwing the fire. Fire. They weren't wallowing there. They were standing up, unbound, walking with the fourth one, the king of kings and lord of lords. So even in the midst of that burning fire that they were walking, and then when they came out, they couldn't even tell there was in a fire. That's impossible. Have you ever tried to burn leaves? You ever had to try to burn something to seem like you're enveloped in the smoke? They were right in the midst of the fire. Why? Because God was with them. And if God can do it for these men, and God can do it for other people of God, then God can do it for me because God plays no favorites. Replace those thoughts of anxiety with thoughts of God. Let's go back to uh, Psalms 55. Psalms 55, we'll look at verse 22. Verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast all your burdens on the Lord. We are good at talking about that, aren't we? We need to give our problems to the Lord. We need to shift all of our problems from us to Him. He can carry it all. But the problem is, the illustration is this. And tell me afterwards if you can relate. One day back in the 1800s, they had the old buckboards, and a man went into town and bought a, a sack of potatoes. And he was heading out of town, and here comes just a just a uh, person with the buckboard says, Sir, where are you going? Well, I'm going to my farm. Would you like a ride? I'd love to have a ride. Well, hop on. And so, remember, he's carrying a sack of potatoes. Now, if you ever carried a sack of potatoes, those are heavy. And they're not very easy to hold because one potato can shift and the potatoes go forward or backwards. So he literally takes the sack of potato, throws it on the buckboard, gets on the back of the buckboard, and instead of letting the potatoes sit on the side and let the buckboard carry it away, he picks up the sack of potatoes and puts them back on his shoulders. How many of us can relate to that? 
Lord, I will give you my problems, but I'm afraid to get rid of them because if I get rid of it, I don't know what else to do. That's a very unusual position to know that we are free from our problems. That's why we, by nature, choose to go back to those things instead of letting ourselves go. Cast all our burdens on the Lord. But then lastly, look at verse 18. Psalms 55, 18 says this. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, when there were many with me. Keep your eye on eternity. One of the reasons we fear is that we forget that this life is that it's not all about. Life is short. The Bible says it's like a vapor, it appears for just a little time, it vanishes away. The Bible says life is like a courier that runs from one place to the next and gives the message. <clears throat> the Bible says life is about like a story that is told. See, the fact is that the eternity which we talk about is real. And the fact is that we are headed for a much better place. And we're not going to be alone up there. Because the Bible says there, where there were many with me. We grieve when someone passes. And we should, because there's a separation there. We know that person knows the Lord. Is that the grieving is still going to be there because of the loss. But the fact is this joy and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And just recently, one of my dear friends, when I was a basketball commissioner, and I was, I was also a Sunday school teacher of a single adult class, and this man was one of my best helpers. And um, he had some health issues and just recently just passed away. <clears throat> and I was just reliving stories of how, of things we did together and working with kids at the basketball programs and teaching them and, and then having junior church, he would come and he would teach a Bible story or, or I would go with him and we'd just do different things because he was just a single adult man who was very lonely and just needed some company. And then this couple days I was telling some friends that he didn't know he passed away. It just caused me to realize life is short. And all the health problems that my friend Bill had, he doesn't have anymore. The legs that, that were weak and feeble are strong now. The body that was broken down by sickness is completely renewed. The vision that was dimmed, the mind that was stagnant, has all been changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, changed forever in the presence of a Savior. So yes, life seems to be forever and struggles and all of a sudden the more problems you have, it just seems like life just slows down and kind of just drag through life because the problems seem to never end. But for a child of God, we're going to a place that doesn't end called heaven. And it is, it's a transition that is immediate. But the Bible says to be asked for the body to be present with the Lord. Look at Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. While you're turning, listen to this. Death for the Christian is a transfer, a promotion. It is on to better things. No more problems. You're not ready to live until you're ready to die. Only a fool will go through life totally unprepared for something everybody knows is inevitable. One day we will pass. Yes. Revelation 21, verse 4 says this. And God shall wipe away every tear. All tears from their eyes. When we think about up in heaven, our love was that it's not there to make us. Breaks my heart to know that I have loved ones who got saved under my ministry here at this church, who have grown up to have children and totally reject the very Lord that they one time prescribed to. I asked one of, one of the, the children that said, so where's your child going to go in eternity? Well, I'm not worried about eternity. I'm just going to live for the day. 
He said, don't start preaching at me. I said, I'm not going to preach at you. I just want to ask you this question. I said, you're going to be mad at me. You probably curse me. You probably threaten me, but I'm going to ask you this one question. One day when you stand, when you get into heaven, how are you going to feel when you know that child's not there because you did, you rejected God? And yes, the threats, cursing, all those different things. I said, I love you, pray for you. But as the adults, you at one time believed in the Lord, you trusted him. That ain't going to change whether you like God or not. You're his child. But don't let, leave this life and don't allow your children not to have the same chance that you do. That's all I'm worried about. That's why I put out tears from their eyes. And there's no more death. Neither, neither crying or, or sorrow nor crying Neither shall there be any more pain. It would be nice not to wake up like and walk around the house like Rice Krispies. <laughs> It'd be nice to be able to walk without knowing and think about when is that leg going to give way? I'm going to fall flat on my face. That's embarrassing. I've had that happen to me. No more pain. None. Then it says this. Why? For the former things, all these things are passed away. That's what heaven's going to be like. And those bodies, our bodies have been wrapped in all the pain of all the things that's going on in our lives. It'll be wiped away from our thoughts, and we'll have glorified bodies, and we'll be able to run like we used to, and, and think like we're supposed to, and be able to enjoy life. <coughs> All because you trust Christ as personal Savior. Amen. So my words of encouragement to you, child of God, is this. Open to God completely. Tell him how you feel. Take refuge in him. Replace anxiety with thoughts of God. Cast all your problems on him. And remember, this isn't it. This is a far better life ahead for us. Because eternity awaits. We serve an amazing God. Let's go to the Lord's prayer. With head bowed, eyes closed, Christians praying. Let me ask you a couple of questions. First question say, Pastor, I know that I know that I know that I'm on my way to heaven, I'm born again. And I see your hands in testimony. God bless you, I appreciate that they put your hands down. Second question say, Pastor, something in the message spoke to my heart. I needed this this morning. Can I see your hands? I know my hand is up by death for you this morning. God bless you. Put your hands down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. Then we're going to stand. I'm going to have some music playing. If you need these an old-fashioned altar that's here or where you're at, talk to the Lord, casting all your cares upon him. He cares for you. We were never meant to carry our burdens. Give them to Jesus. His burden is life. Father, we gave the message. Lord, help us this morning to understand that Living in this world is just part of the issues of, of problems, the degradation, the endemic nature, and people that are subscribing to that. Lord, it seems like this world is going to hell in a handbasket. But Lord, we're not, this is not our home, and we long to get there. So until we get there, help us every step of the way. Bless us, dear Jesus. Bless this message. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand with head bowed, mask closed, Christians praying. We need to use an old fashioned altar this year.
those Christians praying.